Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying Immortal Tactics. This video is in uh, collaboration with the Game Development World Championship. I want to thank them as well as Ken Ong, the developer for the spare key. You can check out the Game Development World Championship site. Link in the description. Check out a bunch of indie games. Uh, or if you're a developer, you can compete with other games and developers for cool prizes. With that, being said, let's uh, let's try it out. Try out Immortal Tactics. I have done the tutorial. This game is actually really cool. It's it's a very much straight shooter tactics game, but it is also a roguelite. Uh, surprise, surprise. That is, that has been the trend, has it not? So this is war. Defeat all enemies in the game and leave no enemy units uh, alive. This game um kind of toes the line between like a RPG tactics game, um, aka one with a bit of flexibility and something more like Enter the Breach, aka a tactics game with basically no breathability <laughs> and no flexibility um, because basically every move is going to matter and it's going to count and if you are not on your game then you could definitely see yourself in a situation that is unwinnable. You gotta be smart. So um, that being said, I, I really really enjoy those kind of tactics games because it means my moves and my turns actually have weight and uh, the agency matters. So let's let's see here. Um, we have our three heroes. Uh, they are like kind of gods or champions and we're fighting, um, you know, some kind of nameless uh, darkness, badness. That's, that's pretty much the uh, extent of the story. They all have with them some special moves. Those special moves are are kind of renewable, but it's it's you know a move is a move is it's a lot to kind of try and get that back once you've used it. So we're in our move period. One thing I like about this game is it uh, splits the battle into two phases: move phase and battle phase. I'm pretty sure we generally always get to move first, although I'm sure there's going to be exceptions down the line. We don't want to move our our, our wizard too close to that guy over there. They, they they tend to do quite a bit of damage, so we're gonna keep them close. Let our archer wait. So then we do our attack phase. The reason I like the, that they split it up is I don't have to do any kind of like meta strategies with movement and attacking um you don't have to necessarily like since you get to attack first you don't have to do the whole thing where like oh i'm gonna wait for them to come to me because they're gonna have an action which is going to include their movement and their attack and therefore i'm going to want to let them move first so that they don't have an attack and then you know so since they they've kind of done away with that and in, in splitting up the phases or the the move and attack into separate phases. You can actually just focus on what you want to do and not what you think the enemy is going to do and then circumnavigate that. So now that we've moved our warrior here, we could do an attack. This is an infin infinite attack, meaning it doesn't cost us anything to use. It, it has unlimited uses. So we're gonna do that. This one, that will not kill this dude. We probably just wanna kill the goblin. Although, oh, this guy over here is making me nervous a little bit. Um, let's, let's kill this guy. He does quite a bit of damage if we're not careful. And we'll select our archer. They also have an unlimited attack. They could kill, no, they can't actually kill the goblin. So the goblin's probably gonna get an attack. We're gonna kill that um, knoll. They kind of look like a knoll for, to me. Um, so this, the mage here, that this is not an infinite attack. This is inflicts one and a half damage to one target and also set targets status to burn. Causes half damage to every uh, attack phase for three turns. Meaning, basically this attack does two damage. We won't be able to kill this treant, but we will be able to kill the um, goblin. Although I think they will get an attack off on their turn. We'll see. This treant is... Yeah, they get to they get to attack first, but then they get um, they take that last half damage. So we did take some some damage. Um, not not liking what's going on over here, to be honest. Let's uh, let's move our mage. The mage has very slow movement. Mm, I wish I could undo that. Actually, I actually can undo that. The mage is in a really bad position. I'm actually gonna move them over here. Why are they taking damage? Excuse excuse me. Why are we taking damage though? When a unit ends their move on this hex, that unit receives half damage from this hex. Oh, vines, okay. It looked like bramble, or not bramble to me, like weeds. It didn't look like thorns, but okay. Uh, that, that makes sense now. So we're gonna move our dude over here. Um, he's definitely kind of the tank, so I don't mind if he tanks a hit. And I'm pretty comfortable with our archer there, so we'll, we'll go ahead and leave that there. You may have noticed that our archer did level up. 
Um, that means they get an extra attack. That means they, they're going to get... Well, actually, this isn't an attack. That's an ability. Two uses. Um, it grants regeneration, which heals one health every turn. Um, I'm actually thinking that would be a good thing to apply to our uh, Arc Knight because they're about to take quite a lot of damage they could do with a bit of extra. Um, it goes on for three turns. Then they're going to attack. I'm going to have them attack uh, the Knoll. That actually is a Knoll. I didn't, I didn't realize that. That's, that's pretty fun. Um, let's see if we can't put an end to the Knoll. We can actually kill the Knoll. So let's go ahead and do that. That way the Arc Knight will only be taking one damage. Well, one hit attack. This guy did uh, one and a half damage. Now I'm a little bit concerned about these lads over there. They are going to be a problem soon enough. Right, we do have kind of the environmental advantage. I don't think they can actually shoot around these rocks. Blocking a unit's path, but not the unit's sight of others. So actually it might be that they can hit us, but I don't think they have the range yet. So we don't have to fully, you know, worry about them. Wields your sword and inflicts two damage to three units together that are adjacent to you. So this is a, a kind of a cleave attack. We are crippled, meaning that we cannot move. That's fine. We don't really want to move. So we're just going to have him stay there. Uh, we'll have them stay there. We want to move the mage because we don't want them taking extra damage from the thorns. And we'll just kind of hold out, hoping that we are not within range of these lads over here. So let's go ahead and hit this treant. We should be able to kill it if we have basically everyone strike it. Yeah, I mean, we can do that. The, the unfortunate part is that the mage is now out of attacks. So in order to get those attacks back, we're going to have to wait. So we were within range. That sucks. Unfortunately, or fortunately, they only do half a damage. So that's okay. So our dude here is no longer crippled. He's gonna run over here because he can do damage to both of these lads at once. Our mage did level up, so they get a healing uh, ability. Mm, we're gonna we're gonna just leave the mage there for now. There's not much he can do. So we'll have him. I'm, I believe if you wait a turn um, on the wage, uh, sorry, on the mage, then they will get their ability back. I could be wrong about that. Yeah, one added, so yeah, that did actually give them their ability back. It didn't say anywhere that it was going to do that, but I had faith that I had understood the rules correctly. All right, this guy's going to do two damage to both of these. That's going to kill... Oh, I did it wrong. Can I undo that? No, I can't undo that. No. No, I did it wrong. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, and they get reinforcements as well. We have to clear... Our, our objective right now is to clear this entire field of all enemies. That is not always the case. Do we get an, We don't have another one of those, so we'd have to wait a turn if we want. This is our move phase. Why is he moving so slowly? Oh, I see, because he was in the swamp tile. That's why. I'm going to move over here. And I'm going to move the mage over here so that they're well protected. The archer is actually not okay. So I'm gonna have the I'm gonna have the mage heal the archer. That's actually gonna level up the the mage. That's pretty good. They get a lightning storm now. We're getting quite a lot of experience on our first fight. Archer has leveled up again. I'm gonna I'm gonna have the arc knight kind of wait so that they get their ability back, and then maybe next time I won't squander it. All right, this is actually a good opportunity to try that attack again. This time, you know, better. Um, I think we're we're okay. We're in a okay position. This guy, they have two health left. So if I move the okay, they they have two health. So we could have them come here and and, and fight this archer over here. We, we know pretty well that they're not going to die. This this is a good thing. Yeah. Wait. We'll have the arc knight wait, and we'll be in attack phase. So let's see if we can't do this properly now. There we go. That's what we want. Slam. Kill one goblin and we did a nice chunk of damage to the knoll. Let's try this uh, lightning storm. You don't uh, don't have to worry about like saving uh, your attacks. Like they they re they come back between rounds. Deals one and a half damage up to six targets and ha oh yeah, this is like a hexagon st style. Yeah, this is good. Oh, we get a new attack. Gathers strength and fires a bow with a gust of wind inflicting half damage to one unit and knocking it back one tile if possible. If not, it deals an additional one and a half damage. This is great because they actually can't get knocked back. There's a rock behind them. So that's actually going to kill them dead. Goblin doesn't have any ranged attacks. This is great. 
We're just gonna have everyone wait because the Arc Knight is going to do the final blow. And that's gonna do it for this combat. This is um, this is an extra kind of like god ability <clears throat> that we get. We're we're gonna have to charge it up, kind of like a breaker beam style. But uh, once we once it's fully charged, and you can um, you can like accumulate them. They are basically uh, consumables that we can use to uh, recover our heroes. Uh, I will say this the, a game a playthrough of this can feel pretty long. I'm not sure if the game, um, it does says saving, so I think that you can stop a playthrough halfway through a, a game, but it can feel a little bit long, and I think that that is honestly keeping true to the um, Into the Breach campaign, because an Into the Breach campaign can last actually like two hours if you play through the whole thing. I guess if you were going for the whole roguelite thing, it might be, it might feel a little long. These trolls, they heal, they also hit like a truck. So they're, they're a problem. This is a really dicey field. This is where things start to get really nasty. And you have to kill at least 13 enemies. Okay, well, this, uh, this could be dicey. Oh, what? We have a cute little cat in the middle. Is that what we have to protect? Caddy the cat, protect and save this unit. Any attack will kill this unit. Protect this unit from the dangers in the field. Oh my God, I hate that. <laughs> This one can't get a status, can it? This one did not get <laughs> paralysis, so I'm screwed. What is the deal with this? Pierces through the armor and shatters the unit, dealing two damage and inflicting weakened. Adds one more. Oh, that's actually what we what we want. We want that. Can we kill this guy? Yes, we can. Cat is dead. Sorry, sorry, cat. It's a really cute cat too. I'm I'm honestly very annoyed. I'm gonna go ahead and kill two things. Um, can we kill this guy too? We can. Let's go ahead and do that. I hate that this guy is status immune. That's honestly the worst part about them. Let's do this Thunderbolt. That's gonna be pretty good. That's gonna level them up as well. Level seven. Le what does the level seven mage do? Nothing. Okay, they don't get anything until level eight. So I think I can actually kill this guy now. Please do not reinforce. That would be so... Yep, there it is. Oh my god. He had half a health left. Hit this guy for some fire damage. Let's um, let's do use our ability. It'd be cool if it brought back our, our knight, but that that's not... It, do, it doesn't. Archer is gonna do a single damage to this po poison dude. Worried about the cat? Can't really do much about it. Mage is poisoned. I still am like holding out any hope that I can maybe save the cat, but I don't think that's possible at this point. Cause the cat is the only thing within range of this dude. Hmm, I didn't know this guy could actually, actually hurt adjacent units. I can't kill it, right? No. Wait, oh right, I'm, I'm taking poison damage. Uh, my options right now are to go and bramble and take some damage or take a bunch of damage. I can't believe they didn't attack the cat. That's honestly incredible. Might be able to, well, the, the, the golem's still taking poison damage, yeah? I think that lasts for quite a long time. This is absurd. Um, oh no, the golem has paralysis. Well, that's actually fine. That means we can kill the manticore and then just like hold out for a turn. We can kill the manticore with this guy. Um, so can we kill this golem? Yes, let's do that because I don't want them to reinforce. Oh, we are, they're gonna get to reinforce anyway because it's a survival objective and not a uh, kill everything objective. So I'm gonna have them wait. This is actually great because um, they're gonna get their abilities back. Oh, no, dude, the cat has survived for this long. Concerned about this manticore, not sure what to do about this manticore. So what do we do about this? And the question is, are they gonna kill the cat now? No, we did it! Yo, we survived! The cat is alive! Dead. Nice. 
I just got an achievement clear area one. What do you mean clear area one? New adventure. Okay, it is a new campaign. Okay, so that was the wildlands and then we could do the swamp, the swamp lands. We have a different leader. Angel of death will destroy everything on its path even at the cost of the lives of your heroes. Oh, they all have different abilities too. Mass lethargy. Cast a spell to slow down all the enemy units by inflicting lethargy. We have other characters as well. We have the Eternal Saint. I'm not, I, th I think that the game is in early access. Let me d double check that before I move on. It is in early access and it is 17.50 Canadian, which probably puts it around the $15 price point. I really like this game. Like it would, it would fill a slot next to Enter the Breach for sure. Um, more so than maybe other tactics games that I've played of late. Uh, I think I like its simplicity, but I also like its depth and uh, I think it's doing a really good job of of what it's trying to do It is a roguelike. I think officially roguelike not a traditional one But at least I don't see a lot of kind of annoying meta progression in it that I've um, Complained about in other games. So personally, I like that um, with that aside I immortal tactics um, Have you played it? What did you think of it? Comments below maybe? Uh, link in the description both to the Game Development World Championship as well as to Immortal Tactics on T Steam. I hope you enjoyed this. If you did, definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this. And thank you very much. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.